G'day guys, I sat down with SSW's very own Eric Fan to walk through the actual steps involved in migrating a SharePoint 2010 site to SharePoint 2013. Check it out. G'day guys, I'm here with Eric Fan from SSW. I've got his laptop open and we're going to be having a look at a site that he's just completed where he migrated a SharePoint 2010 site over to SharePoint 2013. How are you, Eric? Good, Adam. All right, you ready to show us? Yeah, let's jump into it. Okay. So this uh, SharePoint 2010 site, this is uh, a part on the SSW site, isn't it? Yes, correct. So it's the rules and standards. Yep. So if I jump into that, and let's just go to all standards. So let's jump into rules to successful projects. And that's one, and that's on the rules.ssw.com.au domain. Correct. So I'll log in. And that's using AD authentication? Yep, that's using our AD authentication. You can see our domain and my okay. username there. Okay, so here's our rule summary page. Okay, it just lists out all the rules using the table of contents web part. You can shrink that up. Yep, we can shrink that up. Okay, cool. All right, so let's jump into a rule. So do you understand the value of consistency? And this is an individual page now. Yep, and it's individual rules. So you can see we've got um, the content editor web part here. We've got um, different styles, picture, um, again, more styles, and then we've got this voting section down the bottom. Right. Okay, so can we go into the editing experience that an editor sees? Yeah, let's just click so the this edit. So 2010 experience? Correct. So you can see here, uh, I've got the title, we've got ordering, so there's our own custom um, bit here. But the content here doesn't show up very well, but um, here we go. We can highlight, we can select different styles up on the top. So oh, I see. So they're your custom styles you've added. Correct, they're custom okay. styles. So you can see they're changing the link. So as it, just give us one example, let's say the, the figure or something. Yep, so let's just make that a figure. Or that the caption of the figure. So that's good, puts a little tick on it. Okay, all right. Okay, and okay. using any special pieces of functionality? Yeah, I've got other custom bits here, which is the people picker. So I can choose multiple people to acknowledge for the rule, and also um, using the metadata services to do the rule categories. Okay, here. show us that metadata services. Uh, yeah, so if I wanted to put this rule into different categories, I can start typing. So rule can go on multiple pages? Yep, so rule can go on multiple pages. Okay, so I can pick... Um, Scrum using TFS, for example. Oops, let's get rid of that one. I started typing. Okay, so oh, now it's this in. Bit. What'd you do? And I think I clicked something incorrect. There we go. Great. All right. Uh, what other pieces of functionality are you using in 2013? Sorry, 2010. I saw the metadata services. Yep, uh, that's pretty much all we're using. So one obvious thing that um, we want to improve on is the search capability. So let me just go back to, uh, I guess, the, the root of the rules. So we've got a search box up here. If I tried to search for a particular rule like... Um, performance? Performance. You can see we're not using the built-in one, but we're just using Google Search. I see. Okay, so obviously it would be a much nicer experience using the built-in search service. Okay. Can you give us a scope of how much customization, how many web parts, how many um, you know, WSPs that you, that you package everything into? Uh, so we've got three WSPs. One, the f first one being a common one that just gets pushed out for our whole site, and that's just a couple of layouts and uh, some features that we've got. Um, the other packages are particular to our employees page and our rules page. So I guess you're more interested in the rules. Right, okay. So if I just go back to editing a rule. So obviously the packages involve uh, a lot of the content, uh, sorry, the custom web parts that we're using on the edit page. So like this bit down here. Um, we, we've wrapped the uh, HTML uh, rich text field right. to basically enable us to configure the permissions to say, hey, only internal people can view this particular HTML section. Um, that just helps us to say, uh, 
we need this rule to be checked or some notes um, that's not publicly visible. All right, so there's some internal rules that only P that AD users can use. Correct. Some rules, most rules, are for everybody yeah, to Yeah, for read. the public. Yep. Okay, cool. All right, so let's go through what were the steps involved in migrating from SharePoint 2010 to SharePoint 2013? Sure. So. The first thing we needed to do was get our network administrator involved uh, to basically provision up a server for us, Windows Server, uh, running with SharePoint 2013 installed in a SQL database. Once we got that, we needed admin permissions to basically go in and start configuring SharePoint. Okay. The next step was to take a backup of the content and service databases from our 2010 environment. Okay. Then restore that onto the new 2013 SQL Server box. Uh, then we ran the attach or the test attachment um, PowerShell scripts, basically to check if there's any sort of issues that we need to resolve um, before we can upgrade successfully. So it did pick up a couple of um, missing features and things like that. So when you say um, features missing, what do you mean? Wouldn't they be in the content or the service database? Well, so, so what's likely to happen is when, when we develop these um, SharePoint packages uh, and we deploy up a new feature or a new version, sometimes um, developers don't cleanly do the write the uninstall scripts. So an example would be like, we're, at one point we're using the RAD editor for our um, rich text boxes. From Telerik? From Telerik, yes. Yeah. Um, but we have not using that anymore, we're using the built-in one. So that was one of the, the features that were missing. Right, okay. So it's much better for us to go back to the 2010 site and just clean up all those broken and missing features. Okay. And basically run the, rest, uh, the backup and the restore and attach again. So every time you saw an error, you saw the error, you went back to 2010, cleaned things up, and then you redid it all again. Yeah, yeah. Okay, was that fun? No, it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> all right, cool. And uh, then you're done. Uh, Pretty much, yes. So at that point, the databases are upgraded to 2013, and all the packages and layouts, they're 2010 layouts. So if you want the nice stuff in 2013, you actually need to do a bit more work. Right. So it's all converted, but it looks like SharePoint 2010. Yes. Okay. All right. So what's the next steps? So the next step is to one, create your um, new layouts. So that's this rule page, we need to upgrade the layouts to work with 2013 mm -hmm. and also upgrade all the packages that we, we've got as well to run on 2013. Okay, what I'm really excited to see now is what does this look like in 2013? What's cool and new? Yeah, so let me just jump over to our dev box um, at the moment. So here is our new layout. So you can see it's running the um, Metro sort of um, SharePoint theme. Okay, the fonts look nicer. Yep, so we've, we've changed the um, CSS and whatnot to make it all Metro. Okay, and we don't call it Metro. Oh, well, it's modern UI now, yes. I guess. Good. Yep. Okay, so it's still got that same functionality. Give me everything. But the nice thing is, let me just jump into a particular rule. So do you use thin controllers, fat models, and dumb views? So it's an MVC rule. Okay, let me uh, go edit. So uh, we'll get our ribbon now. I hope, yeah. Yeah, we'll get our ribbon. Okay, so we've got all our la layout for the edit page. So here you can actually see a border around the content, which is nice. Okay, so here in the styles, so we've run into a little issue where it's not loading our custom styles, but if you actually click it, it does load our custom styles. Okay. And you can actually see it's a much better layout than much 2010. Nicer. You can see straight away, all right. Yeah, so you can see straight away, and if I click away, it's there. So it's very nice. So you can go here, click on, uh, let's make that bad figure. Uh, looks like we still have some style sheet issues to solve, but not too, too bad. Okay, pick highlight. Oop, don't know where I clicked. There we go, highlight. Okay, and that highlighted that in yellow, nice. Yep. So much more, um, I guess, Office 2013 ribbon style. So very good user experience if they're comfortable with using Office. Okay. Okay, let me just discard that so we don't actually use that. What else is new? Okay, so we've got uh, search features. So we, we do a lot of presentations and things like that. So we obviously produce a lot of PowerPoint documents, lab documents. So we've got our uh, SharePoint portal. 
um, it's our document library. So you can already see a nice, um, again, modern UI. Yep. Okay, but if we try to search, so let's do something that we've done recently, so the MVC. Okay, click search. So you can see this actually looks like the Bing search results. You can click over here. You can see um, some, I guess, metadata about the file when it was last modified, who contributed to it, how many um, views it's had, things like that. And if we can find a web page. So what is that called, instant preview or something? Yeah, it's a preview, instant preview. Okay, so if, we, if it's an actual page on SharePoint, it gives you a, a nice thumbnail view of the page. Oh, very itself. nice, yeah. And the one thing that I do like is this slider to control the how recent um, the results should return. Right, okay, very nice. Yeah. Awesome. Um, what about uh, social? Social, um, okay, so you can already see some social features up here, like being able to share a particular page. Now, we haven't actually configured it for our um, SharePoint environment yet, but uh, I guess it's pretty easy to do. Like, it's hooked in here. We haven't hooked in, like, Twitter and Facebook and things like that. But what essentially you can do is share a particular page onto your different social networks. Okay, so I can see that we have a nicer editor experience, a nicer search experience. Yep. Uh, one of the things that I've always disliked is the URLs. If you could click on that first one. Sure. And see how the URL is, you'll see it's quite long and it has the word pages in it. Yep, okay. Can you get rid of the word pages anymore? Yeah, you can. So I've actually got it set up for the NuGet one. So here you can see when you click it, it's got that link with the pages in it, but I've actually configured it so that it's got a friendly new URL. So if you just type NuGet, it goes to the same rule. Oh, beautiful. So what's involved in setting that up? Yeah, sure. So what you need to do is to go to site settings, and there's a navigation section under look and feel. Yep. So by default, um, it uses the first option to display the same navigation as the parent site, so basically inherit it using structural. But what we want to do is flick it over to use um, manage navigation. So once you've done that, a new section will appear down here where you can define term sets. So I've already defined one for the MVC rules. So I'm just going to go into the management tool and actually define uh, a new sort of friendly URL for my um, uh, glimpse page. So here's, here's the um, rules. Under there, I've got my MVC. So I've got one tag already for NuGet. So I can right click, create a new term. Type in glimpse. OK, so that's gone ahead and saved it. So I'll go back to my page. Uh, let's go back. And let me just go to the edit mode. On the page, we've got a page URLs action. So if I click that, oh, wrong one, sorry, wrong rule. Let's go back to my glimpse rule. So we've got one down here about do you use glimpse? There we go. And you're going to configure that to have a shorter URL than what I'm currently seeing. Correct. So let's go edit this page. So page URLs. OK, so here we've got associated URLs. So you can click Add Friendly URL to this page. OK, so here it asks you to find the um, navigation terms that it should be looking for. So this is the, what we just configured. So under Rules to Better MVC. We've got Glimpse and NuGet, so I can click and select that. Okay. So now that this rule has that friendly URL, so if I actually click on it, that will take me to the Glimpse rule without your dreaded pages. Great. So thank you, Eric. That's been a really nice uh, demonstration of getting SharePoint 2010 to SharePoint 2013. And I assume that uh, they can give you a call or an email if they need a hand. Yep. And so with that, this is Adam Kogan signing off for SSW TV. For more developer tips, check out SSW TV. Or better yet, to get your own software project into production, give our guys a call and see what's possible today. Cheers.